Nigerian President Mamadou Buhari has traveled to Kigali to attend the 26th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Uh, talks will focus on the progress and prosperity of the more than 2 billion people living in 54 independent countries in Africa, Asia, the Americas, Europe, and the Pacific that make up the Commonwealth. RISE correspondent Leila Johnson Salami is currently in Kigali, joins us now live for an update. Uh, Leila, good uh, morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So, what's the uh, lineup for today and what's occurred so far? Hey Rotas, so it's afternoon here now and several events have gone on this morning and there is still more to come. So just to give you a brief update of what's been going on and what we have coming up, there was a sports breakfast this morning held in at, or hosted rather in anticipation of the Commonwealth Games that are coming up in Birmingham later on this year. There was also a, a, an event on unity and reconciliation that was hosted by the First Lady of Rwanda and there is currently ongoing the Commonwealth Foreign Affairs Ministers Meeting. Now, this is a high-level meeting that is quite an important one, uh, covering topics from economic development and bringing key stakeholders together to really try and see how we can improve bilateral relationships between Commonwealth countries. As we speak, the summit on malaria and neglected tropical diseases is currently ongoing. We are expecting between 16 o'clock and 16.30, which is between 3 o'clock and 3.30 WAT and BST. We are expecting to have many speeches from, uh, from high-level speakers, including President Mohamedou Buhari. We are also expecting to hear from Alaji Ali Kodangote. We are also expecting closing remarks from Amina J. Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. So quite Quite a few high-level speeches. Also, the president of Rwanda will be speaking throughout that time. So that's currently ongoing and will be on for the rest of the day. Ongoing right now as well is the Keeping 1.5 Alive Summit on climate change. Uh, going back to COP26 and looking at the Glasgow Climate Pact and seeing how we can prepare, Commonwealth countries can prepare ahead of COP27. So that's pretty much it today. And then, of course, the Business Forum. It's the final day of the Business Forum today. Lots of discussions have been ongoing on sustainable urbanization. I think that's been a key theme for today. And there's also been um, a summit on investing in Botswana, which is also quite interesting. Interesting. Oh, well done. That's a full, full slate of activities there. Um, you, you spoke with a, a delegate, youth delegate from uh, Nigeria. Um, was there any discussion as far as your conversation with that delegate on jobs for the youth uh, outlook for, for them on the continent? Absolutely. So one outcome from the Youth Forum this year, Rotas, is that the Commonwealth is now to establish a Commonwealth Youth Innovation Fund to provide grants to young entrepreneurs and better access to internet all across the Commonwealth. Now, this is coming through the finalization of a 25-page youth declaration that had just been finalized at the end of the Youth Forum. And this has been put together by youth all across the Commonwealth with key recommendations, including raising government's financial commitment to fighting climate change, investing in low carbon developments and increasing the taxation of polluting businesses too. Also investing in age appropriate healthcare, better access to vaccines like HPV vaccines and eradicating child labor, GBV and child marriage is also included in this 25 page declaration. And then of course, um, sorry, Rosa, go on. <laughs> no, I actually, I, you please carry on, do carry on. Okay, I will do. And then, of course, also prioritizing socioeconomic and political inclusion of young people. So all of this is included in a 25-page declaration. And this declaration is coming after months of deliberation by youth leaders. And like I said, it was just finalized towards the end of the youth forum here. And it will be presented to heads of governments over the next three days. And hopefully some of the, some of the recommendations do become policies that are then implemented into different Commonwealth nations. Great stuff. That does sound very, very robust as far as the, the youth are concerned. Uh, you mentioned already that the Malaria Summit is currently ongoing. Uh, what are we expecting? I think it's going to be just how to reduce infections and Im improve uh, treatment on the continent. Is that right? Absolutely. So the Malaria Summit is really also highlighting the progress as well that's been made so far in tackling malaria and NDTs. But the big thing here, Rosas, that we've heard this morning and this afternoon is conversations on the fact that we need more funding. There was, uh, there was speakers who spoke about the fact that we have to be able to break the bank if we want to end malaria and more research and development as well for treatments and interventions. So these conversations are currently ongoing. But the good thing is we also found out today that six 
600 million people around the world no longer require treatments for um, neglected tropical diseases, which is good news. So there has been that theme today of really highlighting progress that's been made, but also, also making it clear that a lot more funding is needed if we want to end malaria and if we want to end neglected tropical diseases as well. All right. Very, very important there. Uh, the, you also mentioned the heads of government and CEOs uh, roundtable. Uh, what are we expecting there? I guess maybe any deals to come out of that between companies and, and Rwanda? Or, or what, what are you expecting? Honestly, Rosas, we I don't actually know at the moment, but I will say, I mean, policies on changes um, towards the greener economies. We know that countries like Rwanda and Botswana are trying to attract more green investment. Economic development as well of Commonwealth states is likely to be something that's discussed at this roundtable. Law and order, too, in Commonwealth countries and business synergy and investments across the Commonwealth, too, is also likely to be discussed. And then also investments in energy, investments also... Um, so sorry, not investments rather, but also conversations regarding the food crisis in Africa right now is also likely to be on the table. Um, the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war, of course. And then also, I, I'm sure one discussion that we're probably going to have at that roundtable today is also the upcoming elections in two African countries, Nigeria and Kenya, and how we can ensure that these elections are free, fair and credible, likely to also be discussed at the roundtable today. So lots of synergy between business leaders and heads of governments coming together to see how how we can progress as the Commonwealth or, com or Commonwealth nations rather can progress together. Great stuff. Uh, I got to ask you about Botswana on the morning show. I think it was yesterday. We were talking about Mombasa and Kenya and the tourism attractiveness there. I think about 38% of Botswana's land mass is devoted to national parks. So as far as the discussion on the investment in Botswana, is, is tourism going to be part of that conversation? Oh, I'm sure it is. As we know, um, wildlife tourism generates tens of billions of dollars in revenue every year. Here in Rwanda, if you want to go gorilla tracking, you've got to pay $1,500 for just one ticket. So as you can see, it's a very lucrative way of um, bringing money into the country and really building up a sector. And Botswana is like that too. But beyond just the wildlife roads, there's a couple facts about Botswana that I'd like to, um, to speak about here. Um, because the country is really developing a reputation as a leading destination that offers predictable and secure environments for investment. And, you know, Botswana has also been among top level ratings for both economic outlook and political stability, which is very good for the country. They have stable inflation, I must say. The country's macroeconomic policy um, has been able to attain a low and stable level of inflation, which also makes it attractive for businesses. And both the World Bank and the World Economic Forum have come out with, with reports that highlight low taxation as well in Botswana, and also easy access to credit. So low taxation, easy access to credit, and then developing that reputation um, is really putting Botswana on the map. So I think this year, what's key for Botswana is making sure that Commonwealth countries know so that Commonwealth countries can tap into that. Excellent stuff. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise correspondent, boots on the ground in Kigali. Thank you so much for giving us the latest update on what to expect. Great, great stuff. Thank you, Leila. Thanks. Sir.